DSW Joyride Productions here. Um, I decided to have a little fun, so I, I decided to look up um, some cars that just are reliable and won't die. Um, I'm going to call this the 15 cars that refuse to die. Uh, number one, the Honda Accord. Now, model year from 1976 to present. Um, chances are you've seen a Honda Accord. Um, you know, even you get the old 90s and the 80s ones still out there. And, I mean, I've even seen some 70s still, um, which is really crazy just how I, I personally think these are really great first-time cars for first-time drivers or teenagers. Um, they have pretty good, you know, safety on them and they really good gas mileage, um, you know, and all that. Um <laughs> Kids seem to like to, you know, the Honda Civic a little bit more, but I think that's more because it's it's more able to, um, you know, be modded. Uh, number two is the Buick Roadmaster Estate. Um, if any of you guys have seen this station wagon, you know what I'm talking about. It is the uh, rear-facing back one. Um, some of us that are around my age, probably a little bit older, you have either really good road trip stories or horror stories with sitting in the back of these. These these were made to make motion sickness children either sink or swim. Um, by sitting backwards, you, you either got motion sickness like no other or you became a rock. Um, they were cheap to insure, uh, reliable, um, big. They had a 5.7 liter V8 in them. You know, they were just, a lot of us know what this vehicle is. Let's just put it that way. Um, the Geo Prism. Now, I, do I think this is the greatest car? No. Uh, but... You know, it, it was good for what it's for. Um, you know, there was a lot of them sold. Um, you know, they just, they ran okay. Again, these, these are really good first-time cars to give your kids, your teenagers, because you can beat them, and they just keep on trucking. Uh, the Volkswagen van, um, you know, symbolic of hippies and pot smokers and, you know, the 1970s, peace and love, bro. But all in all, man, they are a pretty beefy teenager, you know, Almost nostalgic. I mean, really, they're they're an icon for the '70s. For you know, just going out and hanging out and just partying up with your friends. Um, gave you a place to sleep when if you were on a long road trip. I mean, you know, anybody that grew up during these eras, I dare you to tell me you didn't at one point in time think about buying one. Uh, Bovos, pretty much. Any of them. Um, the model years, uh, I, I'd like to put it as the Dawn of Man to uh, 1996. Now, these are station wagons. They were family vehicles. They, you know, you could fit your kids a ton of stuff in the back. They had a buttload of trunk space. Um, Volvos, notorious for their safety collisions, being able to sleep, um, take your kids to college. All of that, and they were built really strong. Um, you know, definitely a vehicle that just refuses to die. Um, let's see, we got um, a Saab 900 uh, model year 1979 to 1993. Now, you know, a lot of people don't realize Saab was actually a pilot car. They were. Um, basically airplane engineers that built a car because they're like, hey, let's see if we can do this. That's why if you actually look at the dashboard on these, their they're, um, instrument panels off of airplanes, um, the gauges are almost the same. They're in the same location. It is literally, they took a cockpit and put it into a car. 
Uh, okay, yeah. Next one, Subaru Wagons. Um, pretty much all of them. <laughs> um, 1990 to present model years. Um, All-wheel drive. Uh, you know, low cylinders, good fuel economy. Um, great beginning starting family cars. Um, I mean, really, the, these can go off-road. I've seen these out in places with Jeeps, and I've watched, you know, um, FJ Cruisers get just blown by by these sometimes. It's just really crazy. Um, but, again, a really well-built car and just handles what it gets pointed at. Um, Mercedes 240D, 300D, and the 300TD. Um now, I completely agree with these. Um, I particularly like the diesel ones. Uh, but, you know, uh, 1975 um, to, to, you know, and beyond. Um, in the 1980s, it got 20 miles for the gallon if you got diesel. Uh, you know, put that in today, okay? That's, that's the 1980s to, you know, now. Um, it, you have vehicles now that still barely get 20. I mean, I know my average in my Challenger is like 18. and I mean, I have a lead foot. I can probably get it to 20. But, you know, mine's a 2009 versus 1980. Like, tell me that wasn't a decently made car. Um, you know, it did have some electrical issues. But... It was still a mechanic car. It was not a PCM Dow car where you have everything on run off a computer anymore. It ran that well, even without being constantly monitored. Uh, the Toyota Camry, um, again, it, it had a decent styling. It, it was comparable with um, Lexus and you know, um, really good gas mileage, small, small engine, small cylinder engine. Um, you know, it, for 92 and up forward were the model years for this. Now it's really good and durable. Um, they got decent crash test ratings and I mean, they were able to compete with some luxury cars like Lexus, uh, the Ford Escort. 1991 to 2002. Now, transportation, this was pretty much made for transformation. It was reasonable, reliable. And during its era, um, it was a lot cheaper than a Toyota. Um, you know, nobody, well, nobody gets really excited about, oh, yeah, a Ford Escort, you know. But for its, for what it was structured for, it it's really good. Um, it's safe, reliable, and <clears throat> was really good for transporting things. It was it was that one of those vehicles you got your freshman, you know, child for college. <laughs> Here you go. Here's a new car. Good luck. Be safe. You know, call me when you get there. Um, the next one, the Chevy Camaro and the Pontiac Firebird. Uh, these kind of go hand in hand as they were literally the same vehicle, just made by a different brand. Um, 1982 to 2002. Now, these refused to die mostly because everybody wanted one. Um, you saw, um, oh man, can't remember the name of it right now. Uh, Burt Reynolds Bandits. Um, somebody will hit it up in the comments. I can't remember what it is. You'll you know what it is. You saw that and you wanted to, you know. Oh, Smokey and the Bandit. You know, you saw Smokey and the Bandit. You wanted the Firebird. <laughs> you know, you don't lie to me. You did. You wanted the Firebird. <laughs> yeah, that was the coolest thing of the seventies and eighties, or of the sixties, seventies, and eighties. I mean, you wanted one, if nothing else. To be like Bandit. Um, you know, it was a relatively cheap Camaro as well. Um, and that's what made it so a lot of people wanted one. Uh, 
Ford, Crown Victoria, Mercury, Marcus. Cop cars. Taxis. If nothing else, the fact that cops used it as a constant vehicle. <coughs> Taxis still use them. You still see them on the road today. If police and taxis can pound the crap out of them and they still go, it is a good, reliable car. Now, these were typically between 1992 and 2011 is when they were phased out. Uh, the Buick LeSabre. Um, this was 1989 to 2005. Now, you know... It was a reliable car, not the greatest. It's typically referred to as an old person car, um, your grandpa's vehicle, etc. That being said, it, honestly, they remind me of Cadillacs. You know, the, the stereotypical Cadillac phrase: it "Rides comfortable, smooth ride, good power." You know, it, it wasn't a sports car. It wasn't made to go balls to the walls all day long, but it was still a good enough vehicle and reliable enough vehicle that most old people like them. Um, personally, I, I have never owned a LeSabre. I have owned a Buick and I, you know, I loved it. It was dependable. <laughs> um, Jeep Cherokee. Now this is 1987 to 2001. Um, these are the Jeep Cherokees, not the Grand Cherokees that are still available now, which is essentially the same thing, just um, a little bit more technology and better, a little bit more beefed up. Now, <clears throat> these are ones that you can just pound the crap out of, and they keep going. The parts were relatively cheap. They're well, they were straight cylinders, so they had decent gas mileage for the time, and you know you can take take a stock one and go off-roading. I mean, I've seen stock ones running around Moab um, out there with, you know, Wranglers and just blow them past them going, ha-ha, I don't care if I break something, it's cheap. <laughs> All right, and then the last one is the Jaguar SJ6 sedan. Now, if anybody wants a <laughs> reliable, cheap Jaguar, this is it. I mean, it, it's technologically crazy. Um, the model years were 95 to 97. It was only out for two years, but it was cheap. It was luxurious, luxurious by those standards. I mean, today it's kind of standard features, most of them. Um, but it had good gas mileage, but when you put your foot into it, it went. Um, that's what I love the most about them is that they threw a Chevy V8 in it and just punched it and it went. Anyways, um, so that was my 15 cars that refused to die video. Um, you know, if, if you can think of any, um, feel free to throw them down below in the comment section. Um, tell me what your first car was if you want. Uh, for sure, like, I know that... You know, you might not have had the greatest car starting out, but it probably was a good car that actually, if you think about it, people still drive today. Anyways, um, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.